What if we told you that Mercedes causing a stir with the FIA unintendedly resulted in Ferrari and Red Bull getting caught for some illegal modifications on their car? Well, that's exactly what's been happening over the last week. As it turns out, they've been doing tricky stuff to the floors of their cars. We'll dive more into the topic later in the video. Let's start with the reason why they got caught and what's in store for Red Bull, Ferrari and possibly more teams in the coming races. The FIA will begin measuring what it formally refers to as aerodynamic oscillations during the Paul Ricard race, and cars that do not comply risk being disqualified from racing. Teams will now be required to comprehend and abide by a metric in the form of a difficult equation that resembles something written by Stephen Hawking or Albert Einstein, which is at the center of the FIA's clampdown. On the eve of the Canadian Grand Prix, despite some controversy regarding the timing, FIA single-seater technical boss Nicolas Tobias initially indicated at the clampdown on porpoising in a technical directive. That TD has since been suspended as a result of conversations with the teams, particularly with all the technical directors at a recent FIA Technical Advisory Council meeting. Last week, a revised version that was distributed to teams in draft form did not make any mention of the extra floor stays that became such a divisive topic in Canada. The fact that it is a draft version is significant since Tom Bazes is still willing to hear from the teams until July 12th, but he emphasizes that the substance is unlikely to alter, so teams must be ready for it to take effect in France. Tom Bazis reaffirmed in the TD what he had said in an earlier version, namely that safety was the exercise's primary issue and that this allowed the FIA to implement rule adjustments. It has become increasingly apparent from driver comments that excessive aerodynamic oscillations and or grounding can lead to severe pain, headaches or loss of concentration, with the potential to cause a high-speed accident, he writes. They may also reduce the controllability of the car, thus increasing the chance of an accident. The FIA has therefore concluded that cars with excessive oscillations or high levels of grounding may be deemed to be of a dangerous construction. In terms of construction, here extending to cover matters such as the aerodynamic configuration of the car or its mechanical setup. He stresses that under both the F1 technical regulations and the International Sporting Code, the stewards may disqualify a vehicle whose construction is deemed to be dangerous. He then adds, while in the future the FIA will consider implementing measures that will reduce the propensity of cars to exhibit such aerodynamic oscillations, in the short term, the FIA considers it the responsibility of the teams to ensure that their cars are safe at all times during a competition. To deal with the problem, two methods are being used. First, the technical regulations Article 3.15.8.A, which deals with plank stiffness and skid wear, will be interpreted more strictly. Some teams have expressed skepticism about how rival teams' cars have been bottoming out so frequently this year, while still receiving FIA certification after races, and that some teams may have flexed the rules. Yes, we're looking at you, Ferrari and Red Bull. You can thank your friend Mercedes for this one. Indeed, Tom Bazis suggests that some teams may have been gaming the rules, noting that we consider significant deformations over and above those accepted under Article 3.15.8.A to be contrived to achieve significantly lower ride heights, and hence an indirect aerodynamic gain. The World Motorsport Council must yet approve any proposed modifications to the rules before they can be implemented in France, but they provide a detailed explanation of how the FIA will be moving forward on how to monitor the wear and flexing. The establishment of an aerodynamic oscillation measure, or AOM, is the second and more disputed aspect of the clampdown. The FIA developed the algorithm that the teams must now follow after studying the cars in Canada. This equation takes into account factors like the time, vertical acceleration, and the length of the track utilized in the calculation. The standard FIA external accelerometer, which is mounted near the car's center of gravity and communications via the Accident Data Recorder, or ADR, is the key to it. Its signal will be used to calculate the metric, as the AOM, which is a representation of the energy associated with the instances of large vertical acceleration, and expressed in joules per kilogram per 100 kilometers. The FIA will get real-time data from the accelerometer on the vertical acceleration for each car, which will then be compared to the AOMLIM, the limit set by the FIA. 10 joules per kilogram per 100 kilometer has been established as the initial value. However, this may change as more data becomes available, or if driver feedback suggests it's not enough. The average value of the AOM or AOM mean for each car in a sprint or race will be determined over all the illegible laps. 
The average won't include in or out laps, the first two laps after a start or restart, any laps ran behind a safety car or under VSC, or any laps raced on wet or intermediate tires, because those laps aren't deemed pucker racing by the FIA. It's made clear that teams face exclusion if they exceed the mandated FIA limit. Any car whose AOM mean exceeds the stipulated AOM limb will be reported on the stewards with the recommendation that they be excluded from the results of the sprint or race. Only three jokers are available to teams in 2022, giving them more time to prepare their vehicles to work inside the constraints. Teams are only permitted to breach the limit by less than 20% at three races without being reported. Tom Bazes acknowledged that there is still much to learn about this project and that it is still in its development. In this first implementation of the AOM, the FIA recognizes that it primarily addresses the issues of grounding, but not the issue of pure aerodynamic oscillations, he notes. More analysis needs to be carried out in order to best implement additional terms that will capture aerodynamic oscillations, provided, of course, they are proven to cause the driver discomfort and safety issues. We stress that we expect the driving of F1 cars to be a physical exercise, and that we're not aiming for what could be considered to be a smooth setup. What about the longer term then? The FIA intends to amend the rules in 2023 to lessen oscillations, and it's believed that a downforce reduction is on the schedule. Tom Bazis notes, it remains our objective to implement changes for 2023, which will inherently reduce the propensity of the cars to exhibit aerodynamic oscillations. In due course, teams will be asked to support these evaluations in CFD by performing a range of modifications on their car and reporting back to the FIA their results. In addition, the FIA intends to take another look at plank wear for 2023 and beyond. The plank-related restrictions outlined above aim to provide a level playing field between all the competitors, but it remains desirable to introduce a controlled and fair compliance for the bottom of the car, Tom Bazes writes. Certain competitors have proposed a concept whereby part of the flank could be constructed from a compliant standard material, e.g. rubber. We confirm that we remain very open to these proposals and will seek consensus amongst the teams for such a measure. Teams only have the Red Bull Ring race left to comprehend the FIA metric, assess how their own cars stack up to it, and become ready to follow the rules in Paul Ricard, as was previously mentioned. Additionally, they'll need to adhere to these specifications if the WMSC approves the updated wording about planks. It will be interesting to observe if and how any modifications affect the competition order, as well as whether all the teams can abide by them. So ahead of the Austrian Grand Prix at the Red Bull Ring, F1 teams, Formula 1 management and the FIA will meet to discuss a number of burning topics that are being put forward for action. It now appears certain that the topic of the FIA's intervention on porpoising will be raised, along with the negotiations to engage the inflation impact on the cost cap and the most recent of the 2026 F1 engine regulations. Given that the regulatory body has issued two technical directives on the subject, it's thought that certain teams are not pleased with its reproach. <clears throat> Ferrari and Red Bull, of course. Additionally, some teams are upset that the FIA has the power to control how teams configure their cars despite the fact that the sport has traditionally been about maximum performance. As one team boss said, what will be next? A wet track metric that forces us to change from slicks to inters when a certain amount of rain has fallen? The FIA's examination of porpoising had unintended repercussions, one of which was an effort to crack down on tricks that some teams were allegedly performing on flexible floors. The FIA intends to tighten up its enforcement of the rule beginning with the French Grand Prix, amid concerns that some cars have more flexible floors and planks that enable them to run closer to the ground for increased performance. In order to ensure that the floor is firm enough, the present requirements provide for a maximum deflection of 2mm at the two center plank holes and no more than 2mm at its rearmost hole. The flooring may have been expertly flexed by some teams by a total of 6mm, allowing them to run with a greater rake and considerably closer to the ground for better performance without running the danger of being negatively affected by ground impacts. Ferrari and Red Bull have been the teams to exploit this according to rumors, and now they'll have to get rid of it before the French Grand Prix, probably resulting in a loss of performance. Or even worse, they will have more bouncing. This all wouldn't have happened if Mercedes didn't start a riot against the FIA about the porpoising. So essentially, Mercedes caught their competitors by surprise, even though this wasn't their initial plan when starting the porpoising riot at the FIA. We'll see how this unfolds, 
But if Red Bull and Ferrari lose pace because of this and Mercedes can keep up their latest form, it wouldn't be surprising to see Mercedes win some races anytime soon. What are your thoughts on all the interventions done by the FIA? Let us know in the comments below. Leave a like if you enjoyed the video and subscribe for more of our content. We'll see you in the next video.